Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm excited for the video today. Uh, my husband suggested this video actually. I was telling him, I don't know what I want to film for the next video. And he was like, well, you could do game day style food. Uh, football season is upon us and he's a major football fan. Even if you're not into football, these recipes can hopefully still give you ideas on what to make if you have friends over. I am gonna be doing some recipes this weekend. Not sure how many days it'll be. So you'll see me through different outfits, I'm guessing. I will link the recipes or have them written out in the description box down below. If you do not know where that is, I've had people ask me, where's the description box? It is, it's hard to explain, but it's right under where like the title of my video is. There's like a little arrow to the, let me see, right of the video. So there's a little arrow pointing down. If you click on that thing, it'll open up the description box where I have all my links, any info that you might need and things like that. Without further ado, let's get started. So I wanna make loaded tater tot nachos or look kind of like tachos. And I was all prepared, you know, thinking I have pretty much everything except queso and Nick is gonna bring me some cause he's on his way home. And then I go out to the freezer to look for my tater tots and there's no tater tots there, but we need dinner. So I don't feel like taking all four kids to the store just for tater tots. I do have potato wedges, so we'll see if we like it. <laughs> but for you guys, you can use tater tots. You could actually also just do this as a loaded nacho. So this is kind of a spin on loaded nachos. I have some hamburger chili mixture or taco mixture, I guess I should say, in the fridge already. I wanna use it up and I'm gonna be adding some more chili to it. So basically you'll make like a chili, chili flavored burger to put on top of it. It has some black beans, it has queso, it has some other different toppings. You can kind of do whatever you want with it, but I'm gonna put it in the smoker. So I'm gonna smoke the potato wedges and um, hopefully, yeah, hopefully it'll turn out, but I will leave the recipe in the description box. It is from the Traeger app, actually. There's also some others on Pinterest that are similar. My chili or hamburger mixture got a little runny and I know it's not very chili-y so I'm gonna add these chili beans to it. Okay, that looks really good. Mm -hmm. Which case did you use? The uh, Monterey Jack over there. She used the golf shirt. My apologies. <laughs> That's good. Na na, ooh na na, na na, winnie winnie wa, da na na. Now they're gonna make themselves some nachos, so. <laughs> I mean. They're not a fan of, you know, the extra little toppings. I am getting ready to make a jalapeno popper dip. Instead of just the regular jalapeno poppers, which we like, this is kind of a twist on that. We're taking it to a party tonight, football party, at our friends. So she wondered if I could bring an appetizer. So I'm gonna get that done. It's just a recipe off of Pinterest, so I will link it below.
this dip turned out amazing. I baked it and then took it over to our friend's house, uh, so I couldn't really film too much there, but it was really, really good. So this morning, I'm thinking of making some white chocolate pumpkin scones. I was in the mood to make some type of like pumpkin dessert. I figured it's fall, I need to at least have some type of pumpkin in this. So <laughs> I have some stuff from Walnut Creek Foods and I'm gonna use that. I found a recipe by Half Baked Harvest on Pinterest that I'm gonna try. I've made one other type of scones before and they turned out pretty good, but this is gonna be my second time and I'm excited to try them. We'll see how it is. Uh, if I don't like it, I will, I guess, let you know. But I kind of felt like this would be a perfect morning to do it. I've just got the girls here, Harper's napping and Oakland's playing. So yeah, not too much on the agenda. This is the pumpkin that I'm gonna be using. It's Walnut Creek Foods brand and if you're not familiar with them, uh, I'm assuming you're new to my channel. I have been working with them for a couple years already and I love their stuff. They're based in Holmes County. They make a lot of their own products. They put out a lot of their products in a lot of like bulk food stores or convenience type stores. They're mo more maybe in the Amish Mennonite communities because of the bulk food stores that tend to be there. Uh, but you can definitely look for them. They also have an online website that you can order stuff from. You can use my code Lynette for 10% off your online order. They have a lot of like deli meats and cheeses. They have canned goods, obviously. They have baked goods. They have you name it. There's not quite as much online, but there is like if you go to the Walnut Creek Cheese store in Berlin, well, there's two of them, I guess. So Walnut Creek Cheese in Walnut Creek and Berlin. They have two locations. You can definitely see a lot more there. And I would highly recommend going there if you're in the area, in the Holmes County area. I've shown multiple videos of their stores and stuff. So definitely go check them out if you're needing good quality food and be sure to check out my link in the description box if you're wanting to. And I wanna thank them for sponsoring today's video. So Tegan's recipe does not call to put the butter in the freezer, but I decided to go ahead and put it in the freezer beforehand just because uh, having cold butter can help create like pockets of moisture. Uh, but her recipe does call for putting it in the freezer before you bake it. So I guess maybe that's kind of the same idea is trying to keep your, your ingredients cooler. Um, but yeah, I shredded the butter with a, a grater, which is what she recommends then. I'm still kind of trying to get the scones just right. I've, it's really easy to over mix them and then they tend to be chewy. So it's kind of a work in progress for me, but I do feel like they turned out pretty well. So I forgot to brush it with buttermilk before I put it in the freezer. So it's been in for a little bit, but I'll brush it now. She cuts them before she puts them in the oven, but I think I'm just gonna leave it like this. This topping syrup, whatever you wanna call it, is amazing. You brown the butter, which is me all the way, and then there's vanilla, powdered sugar, and I think that's it, maybe a little bit of salt in, in there, and it's so good. Also, side note, I know this is probably not your typical like football style food, but it's fall and I just couldn't help myself. I was like, I've gotta do something pumpkin. So hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Like it. There's an espresso glaze over the top with maple syrup in it. And it's more almost like a, a cake texture. It's not dry like uh, a lot of scones I've tried, like places you buy them. And that's always my issue with them. I don't like them, like they're too dry, crumbly. But this, especially if you like under bake it, is really, really good. It's more like a, a cake almost. Mmm, can't wait to eat some with my coffee getting a phone call. So we're doing pulled pork sandwiches tonight. My family's around and I'm doing that. Maybe a smoked mac and cheese, 
and some other things. So I'll show you what we're doing. Uh, this is kind of spread out between two weekends. <laughs> but we put the pork butt on last night before bed. Nick did actually. We seasoned it with the Traeger pork and poultry rub, I think it's called. And I put some salt, a little bit of garlic powder or something in there yet too, and brown sugar. He just like rubbed it all around. And then he put it on the smoker last night. So we have the Traeger Ironwood, is it 8500 I think? And we love it. Uh, this one has, I think he put it on at two, 230 or something last night. I turned it back down this morning when I got up like six or something. So I turned it down again to closer to 200. You just wanna like smoke it low and slow for a long time. And then maybe crank it up at the end a little bit. You want the internal temperature to be, I think between they say 170 and 200. My friend Dorcas, uh, said she she likes it to be 200 and then the key to getting good pulled pork I've never done it before so like this is my first time doing it, but she said the key to getting it that a lot of people don't do is leave it set for a couple hours in an ice chest like wrapped in foil and just let it rest because then it like locks in all that moisture and stuff like that so we're really excited to see how it turns out uh, we won't be eating it till tonight so I may have to put it in the oven then to warm it up a little bit I'm not sure we'll see how good it um, keeps it but Nick just got home. So it's been on for, I think around 10 hours now. This is like an eight, eight-ish pound pork butt has bone in. So I think I'm gonna leave it for a little bit longer. It's at like 180, 190 maybe. So I'm making the cheese sauce to go over the macaroni. Uh, you will see that <laughs> this meal here was very carby, uh, but I guess sometimes that's just what goes along when you're having parties and things like that. You tend to have some more unhealthy style foods, but we wanted to do pork uh, so that people could either do sandwiches or do nachos. So we had just kind of a bunch of different, uh, different things for dinner. Okay, looks like a lot of cracker crummy type stuff, but this is the baked mac and cheese that, well, it's not baked yet, but I'm gonna put it in the smoker. And then this is the jalapeno dip I showed you earlier. This time I'm gonna smoke it. So it's the same stuff I made, but it's gonna be smoked. Nick says it's hands down the best dip he's ever had. So this, these are the Sam's Club baked beans. You have, they have brisket in them, literally the best beans you'll ever taste. No joke. So, put this stuff in and let it cook for probably, I don't know, an hour or so, maybe a little less, 45 minutes maybe. So Erica, my sister, is making some dessert that she suggested and it's so easy. You bake some brownies and then you make a topping with, I think like whipped topping and is it powdered sugar or something? I will leave the recipe down below. She got it from someone else, but it's so easy and I feel like it's something you would generally have on hand. So you bake the brownies, put the whipped topping stuff on top, and then there's fruit, and then she melted some chocolate chips 
to kind of drizzle over top and oh my goodness, it was so good. So definitely try it. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. They're not showing us anyway, they're just showing you. Oh, I might. I don't, but one here don't look good. Oh yeah. my, now I'll zoom up on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the, here's the mini shot. Where is it, right here? Your bone, pull the bone out. It's gotta be hot, dude. And it sat for what? Seven seven hours, it I think. Sit for a while. Yep. That's good. Kinda lets it permeate that. Oh, on. Get in there a little bit. You did good. And it wasn't me. You oh, rubbed yeah. it on, so hey, you get Trevor. the credit. Hey Trevor, you did good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna take any credit, I guess I'll give it to somebody else. I did rub that last night. Yeah, you did. So I wanted to make fresh guac. Uh, I don't really have a recipe. I just usually smash some avocados, spritz some lime juice on it, fresh is best. And then I've been adding in some of this pico de gallo uh, stuff just to kind of beef it up a little bit and I really like it. And it does kind of take the place of having to chop up onions and stuff since it's already in there. But um, this is what the meal turned out like. It was really, really good, had leftover pork. We can eat it later. And yeah, I will try to leave all the links or recipes in the description box. Okay, here's a peach cobbler that I want to share with you guys. This is the first time I tried it and it is so good. It's Calhoun Bend Mill. I actually met the owner himself here a little while ago and it was really, really neat just talking to him, hearing his story, how it was started. Uh, you can find these in even Walmart, uh, like our Detweilers carries it. I'm guessing you could find it online, but they're just basically really easy cobbler mixes that you just add maybe you know one or two ingredients to it and it's ready to go it's very good clean ingredients and then i just paired it with uh, the peaches here this is their best seller they also have other different types of cobbler mixes and it's so easy i just yeah this stuff turned out amazing uh just eating that warm delicious goodness with ice cream oh my word it was very, very good. So highly recommend it. I will link it in the description box. So I also wanted to try a recipe I saw on Instagram also by Half Baked Harvest. And this was these chocolate chunk cookies. I forget what the exact name is. I'll link it below. Oh, it was so good. Again, there was brown butter in here and like chocolate chunks and they turned out really, really good. This is gonna bring me to the end of the video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you find some inspiration and you're able to make some of this stuff and enjoy it with your family or friends. And if you are interested in Walnut Creek Foods, make sure you check out the description box below and look for them in stores near you possibly. So with all that, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you all next week with hopefully a tour of our new house. I'm so excited. See you guys.